20 25 years from now you're going to want to say I was there when Ken Griffey Jr. made his home debut. So don't forget that on Monday night. There's a drive into the gap in left center field and deep left center field and Henderson's not going to get to it. It's off the base of the wall and Griffey to second base in his first major league at bat a ringing double off the 375 marker and we have seen that all spring. Welcome to the show Ken Griffey Jr. Now the 2 2 a swing and a pop up. Perez, Santana, Santana makes the catch. Ball game. The Indians have won the American League pennant. And Cleveland, for the sixth time ever, you will have a World Series. The Indians are the champions of the American League. The 2 2. Line drive, face hit. Souza cannot cut it off. It'll go to the wall. Will score. A Rod's at second. He has an RBI double, and the Yankees have tied the game at one. Beltre homered his last time up there. Hammered a pitch right down the right field line that got out of here by 20 feet. He is three for four this evening. And welcome to the home of the Buckos since 2001, PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Tonight we wrap up this three-game series between the New York Mets and the Pittsburgh Pirates. These two should be exciting to watch go at each other, and it's all coming up next. Garrett Cole, the California-born right-hander, is on the mound. What's your take on him, Dan? Well, this guy's kind of unique. How about a five pitch repertoire that he has that gives him a lot of options for both righties and lefties. And if he's on, he could be really tough to hit. In is Curtis Granderson. He's definitely a long ball threat. Currently third in the National League in that category. From the windup, the one one pitch. A little bit outside. Two and one. Harold, we look at this Pirates ball club as they enter play here tonight. They've been on a real nice run of late, winning five of their last six games. And Matt, you know, you look at their split right now, but they lost the first game, won the second one. So you're looking at momentum is on their side. That's why I'm kind of leaning towards them here in this third game. And the good fastball there finds the zone as the count goes full now. Three and two. Here comes the payoff pitch. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. Freeze has it, and he'll take this to the bag himself, and there's your first out of the ball game. And now a chance to meet the Mets. Dan, who do we keep an eye on? Well, Matt, I can't wait to see if La Potencia, Yoana Cespedes, can keep it going. He had over 20 runs batted in last month. Very consistent. A solid month, and I love watching him swing the bat. It looks like the focus and concentration is even better when he has runners in scoring position. Now at the plate, as Drupal Cabrera, currently ninth in the NL in hitting, entering play. In for a strike, and he jumps ahead one and two now. And there are the umpires working this one. Calling balls and strikes is Mr. Patrick Johnson. Well, Johnson has gotten the inconsistent label before, but it's usually not too bad. Sometimes he's dead on with corner pitches, and other times he seems to tighten it up a bit. Up and down seems to be a similar experience, so we'll see how he does in this one. Here he comes again, one, two. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. Into the windup, here comes the 2 2 pitch. And a fastball swung on and missed as he just reared back there, two away. Well, there's nothing better from a pitcher standpoint than watching that high fastball, a high piece of cheese swung at and missed. That pitch looks so inviting to hit, but it's awfully tough to put in play. Into the box now, David Wright. And it misses three and one now. Well, he clearly read the scouting report. This guy's been sizzling hot, and look at how careful he's been pitching him. And we'll have the first base runner of the ball game here as that misses, and it's a two-out walk. Batting fourth. Now at the plate, Yoenis Cespedes, 
He's not among the league leaders in home runs, but his total does top this ball club. Two out with the man at first. And this is low, ball two. Two and one. Well, it's two and one now, and we haven't seen a fastball from him in this at bat yet. As a hitter, you've probably got to sit on that right now. And there goes Wright. Pitch is high, the throw. And it's far too late as he steals second with ease. Good steal of second there, and that really sets up the middle of this order to drive in a run and break this scoreless ball game. Always great if you can score first early in the game. Three balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. Takes a knee-high fastball. Well, Matt, this is a situation in last night's game. They didn't do a very good job driving in runs. Now, in this game, you capitalize on it. You grow from your mistakes and be able to come back and deliver in this one here. Swinging a fly ball right down the line in left. And the stolen base winds up as a moot point as the inning is over. So they get a man to second here in the opening half inning, but fail to capitalize. And now the Pirates will take their turn in a scoreless ball game. Jacob DeGrom gets the starting nod for the Mets. HR, what's the word on him? Well, Matt, last game he had the strikeout stuff working. He got 10 strikeouts. It was fun to watch. He pitched deep in the game. Hopefully he'll give us another one of those performances in this game. Stepping into the box, Starling Marte. And he enters play today, currently fifth in the National League batting race. Ready to deliver the full count pitch. Well, this is the recipe they want. Their pitcher comes out, throws a scoreless top of the first, and then you get a leadoff single to start the bottom of the end. Good start. Stepping in now, Gregory Polanco breaks his bat as this one's popped up. And he'll steer clear of the flying debris to make the catch here for the first out. And here's how Clint Hurdle that set his starts. Pirates lineup for this one. Thoughts, Dan, who stands out? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Jay Hay, Josh Harrison do his thing. The guy is in the middle of the lineup, and when he's in the middle, things just happen. Guys in front of him get on, he drives them in, and if not, he has the ability to get things started and set the guys up behind him. He's a force. And that'll bring up the versatile Jung Ho Gung, hitting just a bit over the Mendoza line on the year. Pitches a cold strike, the throw, way late, and he's in there easily at second. So he's into scoring position here in the home half of the first following the stolen base as we check out the teams that have run the most here this season. And as you can see, these guys find themselves in the number six position in that category in the NL. And the fastball easy to lay off that time, two and two. That's a good take on that fastball there. You know he's looking for something up there to drive, but that was just a little above his happy zone. Not everyone has the discipline to hold back on those. Got him to miss the breaking ball there. Jung Ho Gong becomes Batting out four. number two this inning. Right. Into Andrew the box McCutcheon. now, Andrew McCutcheon. First shot for him here as he enters play, currently leading the senior circuit in batting. He's set. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. This one's down to third. Throw to first will get him easily, and the side is retired. Pirates leave one. Still no score. So stepping in, Michael Conforto. And the average isn't pretty down into the roaring 220s to begin the ball game. Ready to deal. Here's the 2-1. Nope. Just a bit low, ball three. He walked the guy back in the first, and now he's looking like he might hand out another free pass to the leadoff guy here. You can't be walking a guy in inning and think you're going to have any success. And that misses for ball four. So it's a leadoff walk here to start the second. Batting six. Here's Neil second Walker. Basement. First chance for him Neil here after Walker. appearing as a pinch hitter in the game last night. Hard hit ball to second. There's one. 
On to first, and it's in time to get Walker as well. It's a double play. Nice job on the mound to bounce back from the leadoff walk. Those are usually pretty costly, but that won't be the case this time after the two ball. Here's the catcher, Travis Darno, And the home away splits tell us he's actually quite a bit better hitting on the road than he is at home. He's ready. Now the payoff pitch. And that misses ball four. And now the Mets have themselves a two-out base runner. And this is the kind of thing that's been happening to him all season long. He'll cruise for a while, hitting his spots, and all of a sudden the wheels come off and he struggles. We'll see if he can recover here. Taken called strike two on the inside part of the plate one and two now and then that's a pretty good example of why he's such a great pitcher. He's yeah going, stuff going. stuff is obviously the important key to being dominant on the mound but it doesn't mean a whole lot if you don't. Well the play's been made and that retires the side. A couple of walks but no damage more ahead from the North Shore right after this. Striding into the box. Josh Harrison and you can see his home road splits there he has not fared very well in front of the home crowd oddly enough from the windup the 1 1 pitch takes a high fastball for a strike frozen with a high fastball there we'll see if they try to climb the ladder even more on the next pitch on the ground to the left side and that's through for a hit. So a base hit to kick things off here and there's a man aboard to start out there half of the second. That's a nice controlling two strike approach. You cut your swing down and all you want to do is see the ball and hit it. Here's John Jaso now in previous duels with the Grom just a one for nine. He's set and the two one pitch swing and he pops him up over toward foul territory but this will land untouched a runner at first with no outs here. Ground ball right side and that finds its way through for a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Well, that's the sixth game he's hitting. And he's swinging back pretty good now. That's a six-game streak. you got to start somewhere. Pay attention, people. It's getting hot. Digging in, Phil Goslin, Batting average for him on the season. Standing in the 320s entering action today. And this ball runs away for ball two. Two and one. HR, these Mets as they enter play here tonight, they come in scuffling a bit of late, just two and four over their last six games. And Matt, you always want to win two of the three games. I mean, today is a big game because you walk away and you start adding up those numbers in the series. You go, we won two out of three there. That's the goal for every team to win two out of three in the series. All right, time for the majestic defensive alignment for the Mets. And they've got a strikeout pitcher on the mound today. He's in the top five in strikeouts. And when you're defending behind him, you have to really concentrate because he can lull you to sleep thinking there's two strikes, he's going to get a strikeout. But that's when they get a ground ball. You've got to really concentrate. Here's David Freeze to stand in as we take a look at the splits between April and May. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Squared that one up just a little late. Bottom of the second here with no score. He got him, and it'll probably take a base hit now to get that runner across from third. Well, their chances of pushing across a run took a pretty good hit after that strikeout. It's so much tougher to score a guy from third with two outs instead of one. Basically, you need a hit, or you need to get lucky with a wild pitch or a pass ball. Looking to wiggle out of this, here it is. And he gets a piece here as this ball is fouled away. Obviously, he wants to help himself out right here. With two strikes, that's going to be difficult to do. Let's see if he can put the ball in play. Misses. Ball two. This is just great pitching. They start him off with the slider to get the strike, and then they bust him in with a fastball. I don't know what he's thinking up there, but they really are messing with his mind right now. 
Throw on to first is in time, and that snuffs out the Bucko rally as the inning is over. Pirates strand a couple. We'll move to the third with no score. Stepping into the box, Jacob deGrom, 9-1-2 and two due up. From the windup, the 1-1 pitch. A fastball that finds the outside corner. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at 2-2. Two and two. Well, these are just extra pitches that are just going to add to your pitch count. He's not trying to work around him, and no reason to, but sometimes you just lose the strike zone for no apparent reason. Gosselin retreats to the outfield grass, and he has it for round number one. Now batting. Center and with our season just about one-third of the way through, here's a look at the upcoming schedule into the first week of June. Here's the center fielder, Curtis Granderson. 0 for 1 here in the early going. Mets are still looking for their first hit of the ball game. And he's keeping it down here, and that's a called strike two. Granderson waits on the one two. And they'll try to get him fishing there, but he won't offer in the dirt, and it's back to even at two and two. Pitch on the way. Now a swing, and he just fouls this one away. Oh, he's looking pretty good right now. Look, that was a nice swing following the changeup. He just couldn't put it in play. Again, he sends it out of play. Well, that was a pretty good pitch right there. A little bit late. That's why he wasn't able to catch it right there in his wheelhouse. Hit sharply on the ground. On to first, and there were two down. Here now is his Drupal Cabrera. Both for one for him here in this one. Third inning, no score to this point. Good pitch there. Catches the outside corner for strike two. Look, Matt, he's done a nice job getting those first two outs. I mean, look, this is a good hitting team. And now you got the two hitter coming to the middle of the order. But you can limit the damage. And the throw is in time to get him to retire the side. Mets go down one, two, three. Home half of the third coming up. No score. Back with Harold Reynolds and Dan Plezak, Matt Vaskersian, as Starling Marte steps in to start the inning. The two and one on its way. And he can't catch the corner here, so he's behind three and one. Well, that sets up a big pitch right here, Matt, because you don't want to lose the leadoff guy in a scoreless game. It's tough to work around the leadoff walk. Swing and a miss as he went after the slider there, and that'll run the count full. And this is lifted high in the air down the right field line. Conforto is over near the stands as he makes the catch for the first down. The and with that, we give you a look at what's happening in the NL East race. Polanco. Here's Gregory Polanco. He popped out in his first trip. Here's the one and one pitch. Pitch rides in on him here as this is popped weakly toward the left side of the infield. And the catch out there made by oh, Wright for out right. number two. Jung -ho. Digging in to try it again. Jung Ho gone. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Can't get him to chase. It's one and two. Wow, that's a tough pitch to lay off right there. You're down 0-2. You're in protect mode. You want to chase that ball? Nice layoff. Fouled back. So he threw the slider darting away to him two times in a row. Now I don't think he'll go for it again. I'm looking for something hard inside on this pitch. And two and two. Even at two balls and two strikes, here's the pitch. Good job to spoil that one away, and he stays alive. Looking to punch him out again, the pitch. And another foul ball. The 2 2 one more time. On the eighth pitch of the at bat is the one that finally does it as he wears him down and the inning is over. 
Down in order go the Pirates. We'll head to the fourth, still scoreless. Here's the third baseman, David Wright. He'll lead things off against Garrett Cole. Let him get a strike. Ready now with the payoff pitch. And he Whoa. lays off there, ball four. So the leadoff man is on here to begin stanza number four. Hey, they haven't been able to register a hit against this guy, but at least they have a base runner here. We'll see if that leads to something. Here's your one Cespedes. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Ready with the one and one. And a fastball in the dirt that's taken for a ball. Well, if you love pitching and defense, this has been a game for you. Are you happy with that, Dan? Oh, you have to love it. You know, Matt, we have so many of these games that are 12 to 10 and 9 to 8. It's nice to see a low scoring pitcher's duel for once. He's set. Here's the 2 2. Pitch outside the throw. It skips in and he's safe. Close play, but he's in there. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt, Matty. The ball isn't carrying well tonight, and we haven't seen any home run, so sometimes you have to try for something else. Now with seeing a single could be all it takes to push a run across. Throw on to first in time, one away. The right fielder Digging in for his second at bat, Michael, Michael Conforto. Conforto. He drew a walk his first time up. He's set. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. And here's a slider that runs inside that time, and that'll keep him from diving out over the plate. Can't find the zone there, and it's 3-1. Hey, one thing's clear. He's not afraid to pitch inside, right? One pitch ducks him away, then he comes right back with another one. So clearly this pitcher, he's not afraid to work that inner half of the plate. That's a hit. The first of the game for the Mets. Wright is on his way home. And the run will score as the Mets have claimed the early 1-0 advantage. Well, Matt, they didn't score much yesterday. You know, the conversation before the game was, was the offense going to be able to do anything today? Right there, that one run might be enough to kind of propel them into a good stretch now. Standing in now, Neil Walker. A good knee-high changeup taken for a strike. Look, Matt, this guy's got a great sinker. Here's the key. He's got a runner on first base. This is where you can get that ground ball double play. Make him chase that hard sinker and hit it into the dirt and turn one over for you. Marte is under it. Two down. And he will scurry back to first as he'll think twice about trying to move up. Now batting. Catcher. Here's the catcher, Travis, Travis Darno. He drew a base on balls his first time up. Even at a ball and a strike, here's the pitch. That's in. And that misses two and one. One run, just one hit, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. And that's in there above the belt, so it's even now, two and two. Oh, that's for sure going to be a pitch he wants back. You're not going to get many balls right in the wheelhouse from a top-level arm like this. And this is fouled back and out of play. The 2-2 two -two one more time. Waved at and missed for the third out. Not much of a chance at hitting that one, and the inning is over. A run, a hit, and a man left. To the bottom of inning number four we go. The Mets lead it one to nothing. Here's Andrew McCutcheon now. He's 0 for 1 thus far. Into the windup. Here's the 2 and 1 pitch. And he misses badly with a fastball here, and it's three and one now. Well, he's been throwing the ball pretty well so far, but right here, three balls to the leadoff guy to maybe get them a chance to get them going. He's just got to come back, make them swing the bat. I'd rather see him earn his way on the base by swinging the bat instead of a walk. No walks yet. Here's the delivery. This is skied into the air to straightaway center. And there to take it in is Granderson for the first out of the inning. Third baseman, number five. Josh Riding in once again, Josh Harrison, a base hit in his first trip. From the windup, the 1-1 pitch. 
Now a ball swung on and heading for the stands in right and that'll move the count to one and two now. Got him swinging chased it well out of the zone and there are two gone. This guy is really locked in on the bump right now. He's just playing good old fashioned hardball right now. Just rearing back and letting it go. And it seems like this lineup they don't have an answer for anything he's bringing so far. Here's John Jason now and then it seems like this starter is just dominating the game right now. Feels like we're seeing a lot of three up three down innings. No doubt about that Matt. Hey I've enjoyed watching him go about his business but I'm also interested to see if this offense can figure out a way to get a couple of cracks in his armor before it gets too late. Yeah that remains to be seen. And now oh, this ball's going to wind up out of play and a big mistake there. Wow you see some throwing errors sometimes but you don't see them from the second baseman that often look like he was trying to aim it instead of throwing it and the result is an E4. 2 1 pitch is a slider taken for a cold strike two. tell you what I'm already taking inventory in the fourth inning here Matt his secondary pitch has really been effective he's used it well it's getting a lot of good results from it I just wonder if they're going to make an adjustment as the game continues now a fastball swung on and missed and that is out number three one left for Pittsburgh it remains one nothing. And that brings up the catcher T.J. Rivera. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. And they'll try to bounce a curveball on 0 and 2, but he holds back. It's 1 and 2 now. Now here's the pitch. And he wasn't going to hit that one with an or the strikeout, and there's one gone. An early look at the line score here tonight as we play the top of the fifth and boy just one lone hit for the visitors this evening as they've been taken to task by this starter. Ready for another chance. Jacob DeGrom comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Here's the one and one pitch. Soft liner to the left side. And the pitcher's got himself a base hit. Well he's pitching well they send him back up to the plate and what does he do he rewards him with the base hit. This is a great game for him Curtis so far. Anderson. And some action now in the Pirates bullpen they've got a lefty and a right hander up to throw. In now Curtis Granderson. Oh and ouch that one drilled him. Here now is his Drupal Cabrera. He comes in over two thus far. He's set. Here's the three and two. And he misses with that one. Ball four. And that's going to load the bases now with still only one away. I think he was trying to be a little too fine there, and a walk is the result. Well, the good news is he has a force at every base. The bad news? A single probably drives in a couple of runs. Wade LeBlanc is going to take over here in inning number five, so it'll be a bullpen game from here on out. David Wright will be the first to meet him here, and he'll do so in an enviable situation indeed. Bases loaded and only one out now. Lifted in the air out towards left center. After it is Marte. He gets there to make the catch, but this should bring home a run as the runner tags from third. And it's a sack fly and an RBI. It's now a 2 nothing game. Obviously he's hoping for more up there with the bases loaded but you can't be too upset with a sack fly. Digging in once again. Yoenis Cespedes for his career in this matchup. He's hitless in six tries. Ready with the 1 1 pitch. High in the air out to center field. Marte's after it. And that ends the inning. Mets played a run on a couple of hits. Home half of the fifth coming up. It's the Mets two and the Pirates nothing. Here's David Freeze to stand in. He'll start things out here in the home fifth and it's been tough sledding for this lineup through the first half of the game. Yeah they haven't had any momentum going to the plate so far in this one Matt. They need something to break their way and wake them up a bit. Be nice to get these fans involved at some point as well. Fastball called strike one and two. 
Swing and a miss, and he'll start the fifth the same way he ended the fourth with a punch out, one away. Another strikeout for him on the mound, and boy, is it fun to watch him go about his business. Ah, no doubt, Matty. He's one of my favorites, mostly because of his stuff. You know, he can absolutely dominate on any given day because of what he offers up there. It's just nasty. There aren't many hitters that like to see this guy on the mound. Both clubs with three hits in the ballgame. In there, one and two now. Hit on the ground out to short. Cabrera's there. In time to first, and there are two away. Now batting. Center fielder. Here's Starling Marte. He's one for two in the ballgame. Looking to fade his first walk. Here it comes. Well hit. Deep down the right field line. And that nearly would have gotten him on the board. Instead, it's a long foul ball. And he struck him out. His seventh of the ball game, and that ends the inning. One, two, three, go the Pirates. They're still down. It's 2-0. Juan Nicasio takes over to start the sixth the inning on the mound. Number 12, Juan Nicasio. Digging in and looking for more, Michael Conforto. He'll be the first to the plate for the Mets in their half of the sixth. Here's the one and two delivery. And a slider just about gets away from him there as it runs in a bit too close for comfort. Sinker, three and two now. Wow, talk about a waste pitch on two and two. That one wasn't even close. I don't know anyone that would have swung at that pitch. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first down. Well, we've seen some really good pitching from these guys on this one. The bullpen has looked sharp and it backed up a nice effort turned in by the starter. These Walker. days, pitching has become a full staff effort, and I've been impressed with the job these guys have done so far. Into the windup, here's the two and one pitch. Line drive to center field. A dive, but it'll get past him out in center, and this could roll till tomorrow. He hit the corner and tries for third. And he will make it all the way to third now as that mistake proves a costly one indeed. Hey, even the now best batting. center fielders make mistakes Catcher. once in a while, Travis. and that's definitely Don't the know. case here. He totally misplays it, and by the time he recovers, no chance of keeping him from ending up at third. Into the box now, Travis Darno. And that misses ball four. So with one out, that'll at least set up the double play possibility here that could get them out of the inning. And with first base open, the last thing he wanted to do was give him something to hit in the heart of the zone. So no harm done. Force out anywhere now. Line towards center field. And he will deliver one of the biggest at-bats of the night. It's a base hit. And that'll bring home run number three. It's now a 3 nothing cushion. Now batting, the pitcher, Jacob DeGrom. Now it looks like a right-hander's up and throwing in the Pittsburgh bullpen. Into the box, Jacob DeGrom. And here's a fastball not close as he runs it to two and one now. His pitch count is getting up there in the inning now. He needs to get this frame over with sooner than later, so forcing contact and getting the defense involved is probably the best thing he can do. And he'll just scoop this away to make sure it stays foul, so we'll see if they keep the bunt on here with two strikes. All even at two and two. Here it is. Now a bunt attempt here. And you can't ask for much more out of a pitcher than that. The sacrifice works to perfection. Center fielder number three. Here's the center Curtis. fielder Curtis Granderson. Granderson. His lifetime line against Nicasio. Just a three for 13 batting line. He's taken him deep once. 
hit sharply on the ground. A diving try, but it's through into the outfield. In to score, the runner from third. They're going to extend their lead as the runner scores from second. Now a 5-0 lead. The way the game is played today, the leadoff guy, he drives in two runs, and you don't think a whole lot of it because he's now one of the guys that's an RBI producer. This is not your dad's old game. This is the new school. Standing in now, a dribble Cabrera. Pitch inside. And he is out at second. Caught stealing to end the inning. So they pick up three runs on three hits. No errors and no one left. Two, three, and four do up in the home half of the sixth. It's the Mets five and the Pirates nothing. Here's Gregory Polanco. And Dan, he and his fellow top of the order hitters haven't really offered much help for this lineup so far. No, your one, two, three guys are the ones you look to to generate a lot of action. And they just haven't been up to the task so far in this one. Still time for them to turn it around, though. We'll see if it happens. That misses, and we're even at two and two. Not where he wanted that fastball to be, and it's three and two now. With the meat of the order due up next, you could probably expect to see something you can handle here with the full count as the two-hole hitter. Count is full. Here's the pitch. Boy, really making him work now as the seventh pitch of the at-bat is also fouled away, so the count will hold steady at three balls and two strikes. This is in the air for Cespit is in left. One gone. Now batting. Shortstop. And that'll bring up the Jung versatile Jung Ho Gung. And he's likely just trying to put one in play here. 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts thus far. Fastball close, but he didn't get it 2 and 1. We've seen him go down on strikes more than once in this game, so. This has been a better approach by him at this at bat much more patient and he's gotten himself into a good hitters count. He struck him out the third time he's fanned in the game. Man they have really had his number so far in this series. That's his fifth strikeout in this series alone. Andrew McCutcheon. Stepping in now, Andrew McCutcheon. Driven down the left field line, will it stay fair? No, a little too much hook on it there. It's a foul ball. Well, he got what he's looking for. He just got out in front of it right there. Up the middle and off his leg. Fortunately, he's able to stick with it and get the out at first, and that'll put an end to the inning. Down in order go the Pirates. Need to get it going soon. It's 5-0. Back here in Pittsburgh, getting set for the seventh inning now with the Mets out on top. But first, let's check out the game summary through the first six innings of baseball. Striding in once again as Drupal Cabrera. He's 0 for 2 thus far in this one. Here's the one and one delivery. A swing and a drive to center field. That one's got a chance. Marte going back. He's there and records the first down. Here's the third baseman, David Wright. His lifetime line against Nicasio. Two hits in seven tries. Two of those hits were for home runs. Lifts it into the air to shallow center. Here comes Marte. Two gone. Here's Joanna Cespedes. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. Five runs, six hits. One error in the game for the Mets thus far. A little bouncer. Oh, and it eats him up a bit. And they'll have no play as he reaches first base safely. Ready for another shot now. Michael Conforto. A hit in two official trips to the plate to this point in the ballgame. 
the set and the one one pitch outside two and one. He's going, he set huh? and the 2 1 pitch. It swung on and missed the throw. And it's far too late as he steals second with ease. Clearly, they're not satisfied with the lead they're working with right now. And I like that. You don't want to disrespect your opponent and do that in a blowout game, but I don't think you can get comfortable with a five run lead. And now they've got a chance to add on to it. Two out here and a runner at second. And he pops it up back behind second base. Gong is there for it. No trouble with this one, and the inning is over. Ladies Mets leave one, it's but they hold the a five-nothing lead. Josh Harrison stands in. He singled in two trips to the plate thus far. And it looks now like a right handers begun to get loose in the Mets bullpen. Here it comes on one and one. And now a bunt attempt here as he gets this one down. And the throw will be too late so it's a bunt single to get him started here. Well Matt maybe this bunt is a sign of things to come. This offense has been struggling. They've been shut down most of the game. Maybe they're changing their game plan. Drop a bunt play a little small ball. We'll see what they do the rest of the inning. Into the box now, John Jaso. Three and one. Well, with the leadoff man getting on right there, Matt, they are falling so far behind. They have to capitalize. They have to get some runs to get back in this thing. And he's taking here and looks at strike two right down the middle. Matt, I thought he might be in jeopardy of walking the guy here for the first time in this game. Went down 3-0, but he's come all the way back 3-2 now. And I think he'll just make the guy put it in play or put one on the corner. He's going that good. He's clearly looking to hit off the fastball and adjust. That's a pretty good swing after seeing two fastballs now in a row. He's set. Here's the three and two. And that's in for his second hit of the afternoon. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Hey, so that's a base hit right there. Now they got two runners on. This may be their best opportunity to get on the board. They've been shut out the whole game. Digging in once again, Phil Goslin. And his guys are looking to erase that donut on the scoreboard with a runner in scoring position. Yeah, Matt, they've been really shut down so far in this one. They've had runners on base, but haven't been able to string anything together. Fernando Salas comes on now in an awfully difficult situation as there are two on here with nobody out. Count is full. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a drive hit well out to right field, but that'll be off the right field wall. He leaps, but he can't get it. It's down for extra bases. Harrison rounds third and is digging for the plate, and the run is in to score from second. Oh, the play is small ball this inning, Matt. Back to back to back singles. First baseman, David Reed. Ready once again, David Freeze. He struck out twice thus far, so we'll see if he can fare any better here. Action in the Mets' bullpen now. It's both a lefty and a right-hander that start to throw. And this is sliced foul into the stands in right, out of play. None out, runners at first and second. Here's a swing, and oh, man! Way out of here. that the game started a while ago but better late than never I guess sometimes one big hit is all it takes to get a team going we'll see if they can build on it and make a run here Jordy Mercer will pinch hit here and he's the potential tying run Jordy Mercer 
softly hit out towards short. But right to Cabrera, and that's the first down. Center fielder number six. Into the box now, Starling Marte. He got called out on strikes his last time through. Ready with two balls and a strike. Takes a look at one catching the outside corner. Even at two balls and two strikes, here's the pitch. And now this ball's lifted in the air down the right field line, but this will get back into the seats, so the count holds at two and two. Swing and a line drive. And a big sigh of relief on the mound as that nearly tied it, but this ball is foul. And a fastball swung on and missed as they set him down for the second time here tonight. Boy, that's really disappointing for a guy that has wheels, right? All he wants to do is get on base and take advantage of the strength of his game, which is his speed. But with the strikeout right there, you can't get on first base if you strike out. Your attention, please. Now so they'll make a matchup move here and bring on a southpaw to face the left-handed hitter due up. 11. Four runs here in this half inning. And the pitch misses low and away for ball two. Dribbled to the right side. On to first, and it's in time as they're finally able to retire him. But four runs score in the inning. Three coming right here on the three-run home run. We'll march on to the eighth. It's the Mets five. And the Buckos four. Your Daniel Hudson has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. 41, Daniel Here's Neil Walker. He's working on a one for three thus far. He's set and the 2 1 pitch. Strike two at a pitch that catches the outside corner. He's set and the 2 2 pitch. And a swing and a miss as Walker is down on strikes for the first out. People always talked about how important getting the leadoff men on base is, and it's true. So in the eighth inning of a one-run game, that's a really nice job of attacking a hitter and sending him packing. Action now in that pirate bullpen as a left-hander starts to heat up down there. And there's a pitch that just misses the inside corner. That's the kind of pitch that reminds me of many reasons why I wasn't a very good hitter. This thing was inside and coming in hot, and he just gave a stone cold take. I'm bailing out of the way if I'm in the box, no doubt about it. At the knees for a called strike, and it's back to even at two and two. Set to deal on two and two. Smoked on the ground, left side. A diving try, but he can't haul it in. It's through for a base hit. Back to back changeups. He spit on the first one. Recognizing it well, saw the second one and didn't miss it for the base hit. In now, TJ Rivera. Runners on the move for second. Hit out towards second. That's through for a base hit, his second of the ball game. And they'll have runners at the corners following the one-out single. I love running the guy on the 3-2 count. You know the pitcher's going to be Not around running. the plate. And if you got no a pitcher. guy that can handle the bat like Jerry this guy right here, 11. you put the ball in play, and now you get the base hit on top of it, and you're sitting first and third. Beautiful. Jose Reyes will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here. Number seven. Jose Reyes. Swing and a little tapper, but that one rolls foul.
set to deal on a ball and two strike. And that misses two and two. Well, I don't know how he missed that pitch. That ball's in the zone a long time, but he missed it. I guess that happens. And this misses, and Hudson goes to a full count now. It's three and two. Well, no doubt in my mind, this has been the at-bat of the night so far. Crowd gets up for the 3-2. Sent on the ground out to second. Throw to second will be in time, but the run's going to come in and score. On to first, but not in time as he beats it out. Hey, they couldn't turn the inning-ending double play. They just get the force out at second, and the runner scores from third. Here's the center fielder, Curtis Granderson. On the night, he's two for four with a pair of singles. And the payoff pitch is chopped foul at home plate, so we'll do it again. Still three and two. Here comes the payoff pitch. Takes a good swing, but this will be a foul ball. A runner on first with two away. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Polanco has a read on it. Makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. So they pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. Not too many more shots left. Home half of the eighth coming up. The Mets are out on top, six to four. Addison Reed please. is on to pitch out of the bullpen the in the bottom half of the Number eighth. 43. Addison Reed. And that'll bring up the versatile Jung Ho Gung. Career history with Addison Reed. One for three. Even at a ball and a strike. Here's the pitch. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a drive hit well out to right field. And that is off the wall in right field. Around first, he's digging for second. And it's a good start to the inning for the Bucks. It's a leadoff double. Well, that's why they call baseball a game of inches. Yeah, you're right, man. He showed some serious hops, but not serious enough. He goes up high for it with a good leap, but he just can't bring it in. And that allows him to cruise into second with a good piece of hitting. A runner at second, nobody out. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. Hit well down the left field line, but back into the crowd foul. Working for the punch out and the offering. McCutcheon will spin and yank this one down the left field line, but this will find the seats foul. He's set and the payoff pitch. Fastball called, strike three, and there's the first out of the inning. Baseman number five. Digging in to try Harrison. it again. Josh Harrison. Two hits in three at bats for him in this one. Ready to deliver the one and two. And that one stayed up a little high. All even at two and two. Here it is. Very weakly on the ground. Throw too late to get him at first. Not a thing of beauty, but it's an infield single nonetheless. The catcher, number 28. Alan John Henson will be Chase summoned Hall. now to be the pinch runner. Your attention, please. Now running at second base, number 37, Alan Henson. Here's John Jaso now. Career history with Addison Reed. He's gone two for five. He's set. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Shot fouled over towards the coaching box. Open to send him packing. Pitch on its way. Now a swing and a hard hit grounder. Well, this is a foul ball as the count holds steady at one and two. Well, I think he's trying to get that two strike fastball out of the zone. Just caught too much of the plate right there. Fortunately, he fouled it off instead of putting it in the seats. Got him swinging on the fastball the there. John Jaso goes down for out number two in the bottom half. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Phil Goslin. And with men on base and two away, it feels like this at-bat could go a long way toward deciding this thing. 
No doubt, man. If they sit here, it changes this game quite a bit. But if they can't score here, it looks pretty bleak for them heading into the last couple of innings. 1-2 is an off-speed pitch. No dice. It's 2-2. Two and two. That's a good but risky take there on 0-2. Oh Some umpires have no problem ringing you up on a pitch that close. Right is there for it. He makes the play, and that'll end the inning. Pirates strand a couple. They trail it here 6-4. The Steel City at night, seen there from the split of the Ohio River as we welcome you Your back to PNC play. Park. A Alan Henson will stay in the ball game as a new shortstop. Short Felipe stop. Rivero Number enters from the pen to start the ninth Alan. inning as he'll try to keep the score now right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Felipe as Dribble Cabrera will be the first one to greet him as he'll have to turn around and bat from the right side of the plate here. Full count here. Here comes the pitch. Saws him off here as this ball's popped into the air. And this is going to wind up a foul ball. Chopped weakly to the left. Throw on to first for the out, and that is how the ninth inning gets underway. The third baseman, number five, David Wright. Coming to the plate now, David Wright. He hit a sack fly earlier. One out, nobody on. Swing, line, drive. That's going to be trouble. Wright will take the turn and head for second. And he is in at second base with a one-out double. When you're leading by one run, you want to do everything you can to add to the lead the and give your bullpen a little breathing room. It makes Joanna. a big difference, so double here goes a long way towards making that a real possibility. Runner at second here with one man out. Standing in now, Joanna Cespedes. And that misses ball four. So it's first and second now with only one away. And with the bases empty now and three balls, I think they were right probably fielder. just saying, hey, we're Michael not going to compound Michael our mistakes Porto. here. Better issue a free pass and give him something to drive. Striding in, Michael Conforto. It was a fly out for him in his last trip. Ready on one and two. Now a swing and a chopper foul right at home plate. Here's another one two. And this is fouled back and out of play. Runners are at first and second with one away. Uh, trying to pick up that outside corner but this misses and it's back to even at two balls and two strikes. Well, you talk about fighting. He's fouling balls off, fouling them off in a one-two count. He finally took a ball right there. I wonder if he feels more confident or he wants to keep swinging. And the slider gets him swinging to gone. Digging in the switch hitter, Neil Walker. He was sat down on strikes in his last at-bat. Good lead off a second there. Now the pitch. Grounded to short. And the two out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. So it's no runs on a hit, no errors, and two men left on. Nothing further in the ninth for the Mets. Last chance coming up for the Buckos. They trail by a couple that's six to four. Jerry Spamilia comes out of the bullpen to shut things down here in the ninth. Jerry Spamilia. Here's David Freeze to stand in. He'll lead it off against Jerry's Familia, who'll try to close the door in this one. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. He's set, and the 2 1 pitch. On the ground is second, taken by Walker. And he's retired one away. So the leadoff man gone to start the top of the ninth as we take a look at league saves leaders entering play. And as you see, he's right up there among the league leaders in that department. Chris Stewart will move into the on-deck circle now to try to get something started here with one gone in the inning. Line to the right side. 
And that will find its way into right field for a one-out single. That line drive base hit, now it brings a tying run to the plate. You know Matt they was talking about a bloop and a blast? Maybe it is a rope and some hope. We'll see how the ninth inning plays out. Here's Starling Marte. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. Set. Here's the 3 1. Way in front of that fastball. That was an interesting pitch, Matt. Look, we're in a double play situation, and everybody knows he's got that hard sinker. Get that ground ball, maybe get a double play. But he didn't throw it, he just threw a fastball. I don't know what he's doing right now, but he got it in there for a strike. The left fielder, number Stepping 25. into the box. Gregory Polanco struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here. Here's the 1 and 2 delivery. Now a flare out toward right center. Conforto sprinting after it. Two down. Now batting the shortstop, Alan Hansen. Alan Hansen, the next to bat. He comes to the plate as the last chance for his side. Two out here in the ninth. Now a swing and a ground ball. This should do it. Walker has it. Throw on to first is going to be in time to get him. And the Mets have taken the rubber match of this three-game set as this ball game is over. Well, maybe a little bit of a problem is they had to wind up going to that bullpen quite a bit. Five pitchers are going to combine to finish this one to get the win. A 6-4 to four finish in tonight's affair. Jacob DeGrom earns win number four on the season. Jerry Spamilia closes the door for the save, his 15th of the campaign. So that'll just about do it. For Harold Reynolds, Dan Pleszak, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Vaskersian. This has been a presentation of MLB The Show. For more, don't forget to check out theshownation.com. Final line score for our ball game tonight for the victorious New York Mets. Six runs. High fly ball, well tagged this time, and Junior going back to the track. The wall makes the leap and makes the catch. Amazing catch by Junior as he takes a home run away from Luis Gonzalez. My, oh my! Perfect timing and Junior receiving a standing over. Here. That ball is drilled to right field as he hit another.